What's up, everyone? Welcome to Cracker. I'm all hopped up on Mountain Dew. No, it's not true. <laughs> I'm eight years old, but I'll kick your ass. No, ain't true either. I will come at you like a spider monkey. No. <laughs> too much Chinese food today. I had too much of a good thing. Made me a little wacky. Anyway, I'm going to do a, uh, well, not really a small review, but a review nonetheless. Um, I don't have anything that I'm going to be packing away to show, um, except for my, my tiger rhino. I'm going to wrap him up. But uh, that's about it. I kind of got uh, tuckered out yesterday. Did a lot of a lot of packing. A lot of stuff went away. Boxed a lot of things. And uh, I actually wore myself out and actually crashed early. And I missed the damn podcast last night. So I'm a little upset with myself. Um, crazy times. Uh, before we go any further, I want to thank one of my uh, newest subscribers. Venom Homero Lewis 14 I hope I said it right. Thanks for subscribing. And also thank... Uh, Gene Paul Ace Peter making the uh, the comic index part two, I, I believe, and I'm in there. I feel very honored. Thank you very much. It's very cool. Um, also want to welcome back. I said it before, but welcome back. Why not Art? He's back, and so is Mongo Stomp Time 07. He's staying. Good man. That's right. Don't let the man get you down. <laughs> um, so let's get into a review, shall we? I know I've tired you all enough as it is. Um, reading pretty much most of the back issues I got first because I want to just get them so I can pack them away, uh, organize them. Captain America number 333, which I was wrong and I will not admit it. No. Um, Hippies Collectibles was telling me that this is not the first appearance of John Walker, but it is the first appearance of him as the Captain America, so I had it a little bit confused. But, um, and then he also pointed out you could see Stan Lee. He's trying to be Captain America, which I then noted you can also see Dr. Octopus and the thing trying to be cap but um this was actually a pretty cool book i actually like this one it was a good story um how they came about getting john walker as captain america and you know him getting pissed that he had to wear a full hood and he's like itches but um it was cool uh issue 327 i believe is the first print of super patriot which is also john walker which i uh plan on getting i found it a couple spots that are pretty cheap so uh moving on moving on um, one thing I'm a little little pissed off about, but I'm not entirely pissed before I get into the next book. Um, I was looking at... Uh, what the hell was I looking at? Uh, something on my, my fiance's iPad that she got, and she's like, oh, check this out. We were looking at houses, and... <coughs> excuse me. And uh, she went on Midtown Comics, and I, was, I told her, I was like, ah, you know, they, they've been pissing me off, and, you know, I was going over the whole thing. and um, They had a... Uh, a variant for Guardians of the Galaxy number one, which had uh, Rocket Raccoon on a Campbell soup can because it's written by Campbell, and I just couldn't stop laughing. I was like, "That's awesome!" I was like, "That's like the best way to go." And uh, without me saying anything, she went ahead and ordered the damn thing. Um, you know, I told her like, "I really don't want to deal with Midtown anymore," and she's like, "Oh well, well I already ordered." It. I'm like, "Uh." <sighs> Anyway, you know, it's free comics, so I really can't bitch, I and mean, it is a pretty cool cover. Um, but it just sucks because she ordered the one comic, and Cali Collectibles will share my pain when they send you the friggin' thing in this crappy cardboard, and it's probably going to wind up coming to me shot. But, um, wait and see. Uh, I got a chance to read Daredevil number 289. I actually love that cover. Daredevil thinks he's his father. Uh, he's a uh, blind boxer now. Doesn't know he's Daredevil or Matt Murdock. He calls himself, uh... Jack Murdoch, battling Jack Murdoch, I think he was called, and Bullseye is still posing as Daredevil, and uh, Murdoch finally snaps out of it, and says he's going to go take down Daredevil, um, so I don't even know if I have number 290, but if I do, then I'll have to reread it, because I don't remember it, if I don't though, I'm going to have to like, definitely get it, because I want to see what he does to Bullseye, moving on, something I'm not, uh, <laughs> Daredevil 236, portrait cover, uh, it was kind of a boring issue, but I'm not afraid to say it. I actually pretty much just bought it for the cover because I wanted to try to fill in the uh, portrait covers. Because Marvel, every friggin' issue they had of every comic had a portrait cover. Um, and I think I'm only missing like five of them. So I figured, what the hell, try to get them all. Sounds like a stupid goal, but it's a goal nonetheless. Um, not even going to go into review on that one. Like I said, it was kind of boring. Uh, Venom number 30. This was a crazy one. Flat out crazy. Um, 
basically in the ish, issue issue <laughs> the issue before the issue before it uh i said at the end of the panel that he kind of gets uh flesh thomas like i can't you know let them win you know and he's kind of going on and on and he turns into the old school venom um what happens is he actually gets knocked out and venom takes control and just starts kicking the crap out of everybody and what's crazy which was quite interesting i thought it was actually kind of cool is these UFO guys who have like superpowers and they're trying to take over this alien technology and all this stuff um, have, you know, hired guns with them and stuff, you know, hired, you know, mercenaries or whatever it is. And Venom's kicking everybody's ass and then all of a sudden he takes part of his symbiote and nails these guys in the face with the symbiote and it wraps around their head and takes control of them. So now he's controlling the guys he just, you know, nailed with the, with the symbiote. So... Valkyrie's like, I didn't know he could do that. Like, and he's going after the uh, the UFO guys while the other guys are grabbing weapons and shooting at the at the UFOs. Like, hey, what are you doing? You know, and he's like, oh, he's like, they're under my control now. I'm like, damn. <laughs> uh, but it was crazy. And basically, then Flash Thompson's like, oh, you know, the symbiote. You know, he's like, he was telling the story as as he remembers it. He's like, you know, it was like I was there, but I wasn't there. And you know, I have a demon inside me. And then the symbiote and the demon were working together and took out all these people and. It was crazy, and at the end, um, you know, he saves all the people, and then he's talking to Valkyrie and this, the girl that he saved. You think he's talking to them, but he actually made two duplicates out of the symbiote that he was just kind of talking to, and then they disappear when he was done. I'm like, wow, man, he totally snapped. But um, it was fun seeing, like, the old school Venom, even though in this picture he's gigantic, but it was pretty cool. Moving on. Moving on. Amazing Spider-Man number 403. This they basically stole from Batman the Animated Series um, back in 92. If you've watched the show, then you'll know what I'm talking about. When Batman uh, gets caught by uh, all the villains in Arkham, and they kind of, um, this one prosecutor lady, like, can't, you know, says that the Ven uh, Venom, that Batman's responsible for the villains, not the other way around, and they kidnap Batman, and they kidnap her, and they make her his attorney. And Two Face is the prosecuting attorney, and um, you know the Joker is the judge, and they go over and over. And then they basically convince, almost convince her that you know that they're responsible for Batman, which is the exact same thing except with Spider-Man. This guy uh, called the Traveler or whatever it is, he gets all of Spider-Man's, well, most of Spider-Man's villains, and puts them on trial with the exact same storyline, except with just different characters. Um, but it wasn't too bad. You know, it was it was an interesting book. It was interesting, but I'm sitting there. I'm like, wow, man. I was like, this is like reading Batman the Animated Series. Moving on, Amazing Spider-Man number forty, which was uh, pretty boring. Uh, I'm not gonna lie. Uh, basically, he's teaching a class. You know, Spider-Man became a teacher, and you know, the, uh, one of the kids is homeless and says, you know, we're missing all these people, and then he he fights this guy that's like made out of smoke who's stealing these kids that are addicted to drugs and they kind of have a little fight and then Mary Jane says she wants to see Peter again and eh, wasn't too great alright moving on to the last book I got a chance to read I do have a stack to read but like I said I've been um, kind of slow because I'm still reading you know, I still got this whole stack to get through but um, like I said I've been reading the back issues first and the new ones because uh, I want to put them away organize them and Plus with everything else I'm doing. But the last one I got a chance to read was Background number 16. Which uh, is an awesome cover. I think that it really is cool. And uh, it was just an awesome, awesome book. The uh, Joker's trying to marry Batgirl. And she's actually at the church with him. And the artwork of the Joker is awesome in this book. Like, he just looks really, really cool. Um, you know, he's got like this, you know, really awesome green hair. Like the way they, just the way they drew him was awesome. Like they did like awesome details. Very, very cool, and just an awesome storyline. Barbara Gordon's got one really messed up brother, man, because he shows up. Uh, she goes through with the wedding because Joker's got uh, her mother tied up to a nail bomb, and, you know, if you don't go through it, blah, blah, blah. And uh, she's like, you know, what do you think you're going to get out of this? You know, even if I marry you, you know, it's a fake wedding. Everybody knows it. And he pulls out a chainsaw and says if she tries to leave him, he's going to cut off her arms and legs. It's crazy. And then her... Um, psychotic brother shows up and says that he rescued their mother but didn't say it like as he's like oh don't worry i rescued you know mrs gordon 
So she's like, oh, you know, that's out of the equation. So she starts kicking the crap out of everybody. And then uh, he turns out and, and gets it with some uh, chloroform. Knocks her out and says, oh, I'm sorry, I lied. I, I didn't free her. She's still a hostage. And then tells the Joker to release his mother. And if he releases her mo his mother, then he'll leave Batgirl for him. And uh, then he tries to blow everybody up with a grenade. And uh, at the end of the book, you actually see the Joker with like a... Um, what the hell? Like a butler serving dish, you know? The, you know they get the little thing. And she wakes up, she's like, oh, you know, we... Um, uh, when I get married, you know, I have something I have to do first, and but you'll never guess what I have for for you under here, and that's where it ends. It says back, uh, Batman number seventeen is the issue where it'll pick up, but this was awesome, very very awesome. I enjoyed it a lot. I thought it was really really cool, and I love the cover. And uh, apparently, from what I understand, which is very interesting, that um, hang on one sec. That this particular Batgirl apparently has been selling out everywhere and is now uh, hard to find. And also, um, the hell was it? I saw it on eBay. It was already $23 on eBay. That and this Daredevil number 22, which I didn't get a chance to read yet. This is another one that's going for a fortune on eBay right now. I don't know. I, I don't think it was low print runs because from what I understand it wasn't. But, um... That's just crazy. It's just amazing how stuff goes. Like I said, like a lot of comic book stores, they claim they don't order that many anymore because of the economy, and they charge you more money because of the economy, and then people, you know, buy more than one copy of something, and they turn around and sell it on eBay, which, you know, that's not a bad, you know, thing to do, but it's still, it kind of pisses me off a little bit because I didn't think of it first. But um, also... You know, if somebody wants to get the book, you're kind of screwed because if you turn around, you buy five copies of something, and then you know somebody goes in there, they're screwed. They can't get their copy because you bought five copies and they're out of them. So that kind of gets me. But like uh, same thing with the Midtown exclusive for Superior Spider-Man number one. Uh, just amazing. You go on eBay, it's you know fifty, sixty dollars, eighty dollars. Friggin' Amazing Spider-Man seven hundred the variants are, uh, which I'm I'm kind of lucky. I have the Midtown variant of that one. I, I saw one for 650 bucks for the Midtown exclusive and the, uh, oh, which one was it? The, another one that I have, the, uh, the one where it's like the diner. I can't remember who did it, but then the, they're in the background, the Green Goblin and Spider-Man. It was that one, the Midtown exclusive, that one, and the other one that I have where it's got the, his, uh, the black cat, Mary Jane and stuff like that, and the moon and Gwen Stacy. For 600 something bucks. I was like, Jesus Christ. So, people are nuts. And then, uh, I think it was King Joe that said it uh, a while ago. You give it a year, and that stuff will be down to nothing. Like, the same thing with, like, Amazing Spider-Man number 36. Um, not the original 36, but the new one with the black cover uh, from 9-11. That thing is crazy, because one year it, it spikes to the roof... I actually have two copies of the damn thing, and um, one year I saw it, last year I saw it on eBay, it was going for like, I think like $800 to $900, and then uh, three months ago I saw it on eBay, it was going for like two bucks, and I was like, wow, I was like, what a jump, and uh, two days ago I looked it up, and it was going for like, I think like two to $300, I was like, oh my god, man, it just, it just goes up and down, up and down, it's crazy, and um... One thing that most people don't ever believe, but you just, just don't believe in it now, is that comics really are only worth what somebody's willing to pay for it. I mean, if you grab a comic like this, you know, I spent three bucks on it. Actually, cheaper. Granted, that's the one good thing about Midtown, too, is they take money off the cover price, which is nice. Uh, if you like blow. But, um, you know, it's two ninety nine or, or it's, let's just say two bucks. We'll go to two bucks. Now, this thing's going for $80 online. Now, it's just insane, that, and they actually had bids, so I'm like, you got to be kidding me. I was like, this thing was 2 bucks on Wednesday, and now it's 80-something bucks on eBay. It's like, oh, man. And then, like I said, a year from now, when this thing is all died down and all that crap, you won't be, you'll won't be you be able to, a dollar probably, it'll be in the dollar bin. Well, maybe not, because it is a cool book. But you get the point. And I have rambled enough. Um, <laughs> so that will do it for this lovely episode. Um... I'm thinking about, which I'm, I'm hoping I'm going to be able to do, 
because for once I don't think I'm going to be busy. Um, next week, uh, well, a week from now, Friday or Saturday, I'm probably leaning towards Saturday, I'm going to try to do another live show because um, my fiance is going to be out. Uh, she got a uh, technically a promotion at her job, so she's uh, they're having a party for her because she's leaving her level and going up, or I don't know how that works. And anyway, but uh, so she won't be home at all. So I figured, you know, what the hell, I'll, I'll do a uh, um, another live show. I'm hoping on Saturday, which probably be like the same time, maybe around seven o'clock New York time. But I will definitely let everyone know because I'm next week. I should be getting on the shipment. Uh, the latest, I'll get it probably on Friday again, but uh, if I make my video, which I'm sure I will on Friday, I'll let everyone know what time uh, and if I'm going to do a live show on Saturday or not, because uh, I don't want to compete on Friday. <laughs> Too many live shows, and I actually want to watch them rather than try to scramble and be like, oh yeah, I'll do it, um, which I'm still pissed at this little one, but I have to go back and watch it. Um, so yeah, that, that'll be fun. Um, so if you want to... Get in on that, let me know, and if I have the show, I will definitely uh, bring you in on the show. Because it was definitely a lot more fun when Hallamow showed up, because uh, he saved my ass. Uh, <laughs> now that I know how to do it, it it's it's cool, but uh, if, if, if he wasn't on it, it wouldn't have been as long or as fun as it was. So, Hallamow, again, I thank you for coming on. Uh, you made the show. And that will do it for this long-ass episode. And I will... Uh, Go read more comics. Yeah, I'm not going to do any packing. I'm too tired. <laughs> anyway, if you like what we see, please hit the like button. If you really like what we see, you can hit the subscribe button, which is always a plus. Uh, leave as many comments as you would like. I love the comments. And uh, it's not the size of your man that matters. It's what you have in it. Later.